So following on from last time, I've decided it is the right thing to do to paint this engine bay fully, you know, colour and clear. Now, I got quite a few suggestions for colours after the last video, so thank you very much for those. There was a couple that caught my eye, but I have actually decided that I'm going to stick with the one I had in mind already. There was no advance on that. I'll give you a quick rundown of the colours that ended up on my shortlist. The first one being lac silver or salmon silver. It's a particularly nice silver, it really suits the E30, but I just kind of feel like silver is a bit basic for what I'm going for with this build, so I discounted that. Another one which was uh, recommended to me a few times was to paint the car back in its original red colour. It's quite an unusual red, it's Titian red, it's, uh, it's like a deep red, but it's not metallic, it's a flat red. Uh, the problem I have with that really is, even in the shiny areas that remain on the car, around the boot lid for example, it's just not really lighting my fire, it seems like quite a dull colour. Even though it'd be nice and easy to paint the car in its original colour, it might even save me painting the door jams and things like that, it's just not going to be my ideal. So I've decided not to compromise on that and discount Titian Red and think of something else. Another red option, which does light my fire, is Imola Red. Now, I actually have an E46 M3 in Imola Red and I know I really like the colour, but as cool as it might be to have a matching pair of cars, I think I'm after something a bit more different and interesting with this one, so I'm going to discount Imola Red too. Another good suggestion is solid black. Black always looks great and I think E30s look really nice in black. Now, another, one good point to black is that I could do it as a single stage paint where the colour and the clear are mixed together and that way I could layer up quite a few coats, get it really nice and thick and then even if the spray job wasn't that great, of course it's a garage spray job so there's always that risk, you can always come back and flatten polish it to perfection later. So that's quite a nice thought. A very close second that I almost picked but didn't is Oxford Green Metallic 2. Again, another really nice BMW colour and a, probably a perfect one for a British E30 build. But anyway, stick around and you'll find out what I've actually chosen a bit later in the video. It might be fun to exercise your BMW knowledge and see if you can identify the colour I've picked on site, but I'll let you know what it is exactly a bit later on. If I'm being honest, I'm still not 100% on the choice, but with painting it on today, I think I'm going to find out quite quickly. Uh, so let's hope we're not sanding it off later. Anyway, so let's talk about the epoxy primer I put on in the last video. Again, really happy with the result I got there. Didn't really miss anything, which was great news. I've started to, to sand and key it back up and I am noticing quite a few dust nibs, which is definitely worth taking note of for the final finish. Luckily, in primer, it's not such a big deal that, and I can just use a block and take those nibs off and then get the rest of it scuffed up in 800 grit. Now, the colour I have chosen is a metallic, which is a big hint for you there. The thing with metallics is, if you've got sanding marks, the flake in the metallic tends to sit in them, and that causes you to have an uneven metallic finish in the paint, so I've really got to avoid that. So I'm going to use 3M Scotch Bright red pads to key everything up to a matte result, ready to take on a base coat colour. So the fuse box, obviously, did end up making a bit of a mess and it damaged the, uh, the epoxy primer I put on in this area, which I have subsequently sanded again smooth, so it's not the end of the world. I think to avoid that spoiling the final finish, I'm gonna paint underneath the fuse box, and then I'm gonna paint above the fuse box last, because I think the strut tower is way more important than the stuff you're never gonna see down underneath the brake booster. Other than that, there was a couple of cracks in the original seam sealer that were highlighted by the epoxy primer. So I decided to smear a bit of fresh seam sealer into there just to prevent any water from seeping in in the future and causing rust. And if I haven't mentioned, it is about a week since I applied this, which is why I've been able to get some sanding done and get seam sealer on, and all of it's hardened and dried now, so it's ready to go basically. A quick disclaimer before we get into the meat of this video. I am not an expert painter by any stretch of the imagination. I've done quite a bit of DIY painting over the years and I've got some good results so I don't see why that's going to be any different with an engine bay. When it comes to painting an entire car though, I've never done anything like it so do make sure you subscribe so you can see the future videos on that, I expect they'll be quite entertaining. Nevertheless, this is just an engine bay so at the end of the day it's not mission critical that it's an absolutely perfect glass-like finish but I still do like to get the best results I can whenever I'm trying to paint anything. So what I need to do now is finish off Scotch Bright in a few shiny areas that I can see, not forgetting that front core support, and then I'll start talking to you about the paint that I'm going to be using and how that works. Let's crack on.
Right, so that's the front core support and also this engine bay fully scuffed up now. It's all scuffed to a, a matte finish, ready to accept a base coat. I've been very careful not to sand through into bare metal because wherever you do that, you actually need to add a bit more primer. So I've been quite lucky with that, which is great news. I've also refreshed the masking a little bit just to make sure none of that's going to flap around or dust from the previous paint is going to land back in the finish. Um, you might also notice that I've put up some drop sheets just to make sure no dust that's been harboured on this racking gets blown back into the finish. Also it stops all the overspray going on everything which is very annoying to clean. We've already got the bulk of the dust vacked up in the vacuum cleaner. It might make sense to go around and do everything again. And of course I need to panel wipe the full engine bay and again before I actually start applying paint to it. Another good trick when you're painting in a garage like this is to wet the floor down. It prevents the, any dust that goes down to the floor or dust that's already there from kicking back onto, up into your finish, which is incredibly frustrating when it happens, so well worth avoiding. Right, so now let's have a quick rundown about what paint supplies I've picked up to do this job. I'm using Capsi paints and I've got Capsi base coat in my colour and I'm going to be using Capsi clear coat as well. I pick it all up from a local paint shop but it's also available on eBay. I'll put links to all of this below. Uh, if you remember when we did the primer last time, we actually made 300ml of epoxy primer and ran out just at the right moment. That's a bit too close for comfort when it comes to the colour for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to make 400ml of base coat. That way I should have a little bit of excess that I can throw away if I don't use it, but if I need it, I've got it. Now it's a one-to-one -one ratio of colour to thinners. So 200ml colour, 200ml thinners, dead simple. I also strongly recommend having the data sheet on hand for any paint you use, because this won't just tell you the, the ratios for mixing, it'll also give you some information about you know, how long it takes to flash off and things like that. Now, this particular set of instructions is recommending that you're painting at around 20 degrees Celsius, and it's about 10 degrees today, so we need to factor that in, in you know, how long we're leaving between coats and things like that. So that will help us compensate. Also, very excitingly, I've treated myself to a brand new spray gun and this is its inaugural voyage today. Now, I picked up this one in particular based on strong recommendations and watching videos from people like the gunman. It's an ANI F160. It's still a very much entry-level spray gun, but I'm planning to paint the whole car. I decided to dive in early and get a gun that should do the job for me. You ready to see the colour? I know I am.
So that's the base coat on, and we've just paused to let it flash off so we can avoid getting solvent pop in the clear coat, which is next. Now, we actually didn't mix quite enough up, had to mix up a little bit more. We needed 600 mil in total. It always looks like a heck of a lot in the pot, but when you're spraying, you get through it quite quickly. Now, my plan was to put two coats on plus a drop coat with this, but because it's such an intricate shape, it kind of ended up a little bit drunken donkey, and some bits might have a bit more of a coat than others, but all of it's coated and all the main bits you're gonna see at the end are done well. I haven't missed anything, which is my main plan with this. You've got to remember it is an engine bay. Now, the parts that are most important to me, I made sure to go over and put a drop coat on, which is a coat from twice the distance, just to make sure that metallic flake is nice and even on these parts. And the result is, it looks like velvet in these areas, which is apparently what you're looking to achieve. So I'm quite happy need to give it another 10 minutes or so and then I can mix up the clear and start looking to spray the clear which is the real hard bit. We've also given the gun a really good clean out while we're waiting just so that we don't get any uh, colour in the clear coat which never looks great. Because I used so much more base coat than I expected I've decided to go ahead and straight away up the clear to 600ml using the same ratio we talked about earlier. It might not be enough this because in my experience you end up using more clear than you expect to but we'll start with that and if we have to quickly make some extra we will. Just notice that these cups are actually only big enough for 550. I don't really want to wing it so I think what I'm going to do is the original plan make 450 and just expect to make another batch. Hey ho! That looks about right to me. You can thin it down even more if you like, but it ends up where you're risking getting runs much more easily, and I'd love to avoid them. So that looks about right to my eye. Oh, 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 oh,
It's been a week so the paints have plenty of time to gas off and harden up and as you've seen I've just unmasked it all. I'll put you out of your misery regarding the colour now. As I've been going around painting I've been asking myself is this really the right colour? Did they mix the wrong colour? And it's not Calypso Red so if that's what you guessed you were wrong. It's one of those particularly interesting BMW colours that looks very different in the shade compared to out in the sun. So with the dull lighting in here it looks a lot darker than I expected. It's actually Mora Metallic 359. I did take the front core support out into the sun just to confirm and luckily it does look how I expected. I'll overlay a few photos of how a finished car might look. It'll definitely be Marmite to some, it'll be quite a polarising choice, I've no doubt about that. But to me, I think it's absolutely stunning and it's stuck with me from the first time I ever saw the colour. As for this actual paint job on the engine bay, there's good and bad news about that really. I'm pleased to report that the new ANI spray gun is a roaring success. The way it atomises the paint with such a large spray pattern, with a large fan, is really great and I think it'll be a game changer when I spray the exterior of the car far better than using that Sealy gun. Now when you're painting clear coat what you need to do really is lead a wet edge around and as this is such a difficult and complex shape I had some difficulties with that and there are some areas that didn't get quite as thick a glossy coat as they needed. The most important areas are quite passable though which I'm pleased about. The real problem I've got is there's lots of particles of dust in the clear coat finish which is a little bit disappointing to be honest. I think there's a very valuable lesson to take away from that and that's even though it's really convenient to use the same masking between primer and your subsequent coats, you've got no choice really. You need to unmask, clean everything down and then mask again if you don't want to get crap in your finish. If this were the exterior of the car with this many particles in, I probably wouldn't be happy and I'd probably find myself sanding it and repainting it. But it is an engine bay and once I've fit an engine in here, most of it will be obscured. And if I was really bothered, I could probably come in and wet sand it and polish it up to perfection and get it, not perfection, but 90% of the way there, if you know what I mean. Compared to the paint finish BMW had applied in this engine bay, I think this is leads ahead, so at least we are moving forward. I'm happy to call it a job done and move on. So the next thing to do really is to throw on the front suspension again and then in the next episode, hopefully, we'll be looking at the steering rack. I want to fit a bit of a sharper steering rack in this car to make it a bit more fun to drive. And I've got two very good options that I need to decide between. So make sure you subscribe so you can join me for that. Either way, thank you very much for watching. And if you found this video entertaining or helpful, do give us a thumbs up.